What is up everybody? It's your girl Jada Reese here aka Diamond back with another video. So here we have our special guest, my kiddo. What's your name? Otto. And we're here at the DWJ Korean barbecue spot waiting on our food. We're gonna be eating some Korean barbecue today and we're really excited. We're really hungry and we really love Asian cuisine. So, yeah, we also just came from the bookstore and Autumn just picked up a new book. Autumn, what is the name of your book? Um, if you're reading this, it's too late. Yeah, by Pseudo Pseudonymous Bosch, or Bach, or however you say it. I've never heard of this author. But, um, oh, sure. here she comes. She's about to bring our food. But, yeah, we're here. I was getting ready to eat. Um,. I also bought a couple of books and I'll show them to you guys as soon as I get home we're gonna show you the books that I ended up finding today um, and we'll talk about the book that I'm currently reading as well so I just want to come in and introduce the vlog and then you guys are gonna watch me cook or watch us cook I guess and um, yeah we're just gonna we're gonna do it like that. We're gonna just have like a little, this, this vlog is just gonna be me eating, talking about books, and talking about books. <laughs> That's about it. We just left well about 10 minutes ago we just left from the Korean barbecue spot then I just came over to um, 
the post office to ship off a Poshmark order. And subsequently, my mom ended up being here. Also, so my daughter just went with my mother and they're like parked right behind me. So I did say that I was just gonna do a, um, a book haul really quickly um, when I got in the car. Uh, first, let's start off with the book that I, I ordered this book last night on Amazon only for it to come this morning. So I got Sexual Persona, Art and Decadence from Nefertiti to Emily Dickerson by Camille, I think it's Paglia or Paglia. And so I'm gonna do the read along um, with Better Than Food. Um, Clifford Lee Sargent is doing a read along on his Patreon, on his Patreon of this. And I found the premise of this very interesting. I found his review of chapter one very interesting. And I do feel like this would be something that would add to my intellect, add to my understanding of things that I just don't really get so, like that I just don't really get right now at my age. And I, I admire Clifford Lee Sargent very much. Like I really enjoy his book reviews and I feel like this would be very rewarding if I was able to like read something like this along with the group. So I will be joining the Patreon and I will be doing a read along with this. And it's just very interesting. Um, I'm gonna read the back. So it says, is Emily Dickerson the female Sade or Sade or Sade? Don't know, see, don't know this stuff. I don't know this stuff. It says, is Donatello's David a bit of pedophile pornography? What is the secret kinship between Byron and Elvis Presley, between the Medusa and Madonna? How do liberals and feminists, as well as conservatives, fatally misread human nature? This audacious and omnivoriously learned work of guerrilla or guerrilla scholarship offers nothing less than a unified field theory of Western culture, high and low, since the Egyptians invented beauty, making a persuasive case for all art as a pagan battleground between male and female, form and chaos, civilization and demonic nature. How interesting is this, right? Let's read, is there any blurbs? Let's see who has read this. Oh, nobody. There's no blurbs. Yeah, it's a few. Not from anybody that I care to share. Um, but yeah, so I did order this and I will be doing that read along. If you want to join the read along, I think it would be really fun. Better than food dot com or no Patreon slash better than food. So it's gonna be my first legitimate read along. So I'm excited about that. Um, let me change my battery. All right, so now for the books that I just got from the bookstore. We got George Orwell's 1984. It got this thing over here. So y'all know this is a classic. Um, and it's actually a classic which I have not read yet. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm not gonna read the back. Well, should I read the back? The party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. It was the it was their final it was their final most essential command. Winston Smith toes the party line, rewriting history to satisfy the demands of the mystery of truth. With each lie he writes, Winston grows to hate the party that seeks power for its own sake and persecutes those who dare to commit thought crimes. But as he starts to think for himself, Winston can't escape the fact that Big Brother is always watching. So that's what this is about. Then we got, um, <clears throat> we got Swimming Home by Deborah Levy. So I'm a huge Deborah Levy fan. I did read um, the Cost of Living series, which embodies, I, I haven't read real estate. So I read the Cost of Living and I read Things I Don't Want to Know by Deborah Levy back in 2022. Those are part of her living autobiography series. And so, I, like I said, I've yet to read real estate and this, I, I saw this. So I'm glad that I found this. She also has this other book that I'm looking for. I'm on the lookout for called Hot Milk. So yeah, this is Swimming Home. This is about a couple on a vacation in Nice where they find some woman swimming in the pool in the villa that they're renting out. And we'll figure out what happens like throughout that story. This is a very short book, 156 pages or so. So yeah, 
I'm very interested. Deborah Levy is an amazing writer. Her living autobiography was, um, it was very personal and I liked it. I liked the way that she writes. So that's why I'm like, whenever I see something by her, I'm automatically gonna pick it up. Um, then we have the final installment of the Gilead series. This is Jack. So you have Gilead, which I read and it was my top read, I think. It was my most favorite book of last year. Then you have Home and then you have Lila and then you have Jack. And so, yeah, I'll go ahead and read this. So you have Marilyn Robinson's Mythical World of Gilead, Iowa, the setting of her novels, Gilead, Home, Lila, and Jack. And its beloved characters have illuminated and interrogated the complexities of American history, the power of our emotions, and the wonders of a sacred world. In Jack, Robinson tells the story of John Ames Bolton, the prodigal son of Gilead's Presbyterian minister and his romance with Della Miles, a high school teacher who is also the child of a minister. Their deeply felt, tormented, star-crossed, interracial romance resonates with the paradoxes of American life, then and now. Robinson's Gilead novels, which have won a Pulitzer Prize and two National Book Critics Circle Awards, are a vital contribution to contemporary American literature and a revelation of our national character and our humanity so you learn at the end of gilead that the prodigal son jack that reverend john ames can't stand you learn that he has married um a black woman from the south and so that's like the gut punch at the end of the story because that's something that no one expected so this one which is the final installment finally talks about Jack's story. So you can read these out of order, but I'm gonna read them in order. So I'm gonna read Home next, and then I'm gonna read Lila, and then I'm gonna read this. And so, yeah. So I really love Marilyn Robinson. If you haven't read her, I think you should. And then we have um, Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen. I have read halfway into um the corrections and i really like the corrections so when i saw this for two dollars i said i'm gonna go ahead and pick it up i remember everybody was reading this back in 2022 i want to say it was published in 2022 i bet i'm right let's see y'all know i love to be i love to okay i was almost right so that's why everybody was reading it 2022 because it was published in 2021 so yeah this is his most recent masterpiece i think it's over the course of one day this is the entire family over the course of one day and so i'll read the jacket it's december 23rd 1971 and heavy weather is forecast for chicago russ hildebrat the associate pastor of a liberal sunburn <laughs> Sunburn. a liberal suburban uh, church is on the brink of breaking free of a marriage he finds joyless unless his wife Marion who has her own secret life beats him to it their eldest child Clem is coming home from college on fire with moral absolutism having taken an action that will shatter his father Clem's sister Becky long the social queen of her high school class has sharply veered into the counterculture while their brilliant younger brother Perry who's been selling drugs to seventh graders has resolved to be a better person each of the hold on it's my mom that's that that's the premise of the story so that's that and then I of course because I'm reading a story right now I haven't been able to get home to get to the book to talk to you guys about the book, but I'm currently reading and I'm about like 35-ish percent through of Lonesome Dove by Larry McMartry. Um, so I, I saw this. This is Comanche Moon by Larry McMartry. So you already know. So there are four books in the Lonesome Dove series and I really think, I think that this is the last one. So. Whenever I come across anything dealing with the Lonesome Dove series now, I have to pick it up. Because, spoiler alert, Lonesome Dove is the best book I've ever read thus far. <laughs> That's saying a lot. That's saying a lot. But I'm going to tell you, Lonesome Dove is freaking amazeballs. Like, I love that book so freaking much, but I'm not ready to talk about it. Cause if I'm gonna talk about the book, I wanna make sure I have the book in front of me. So I'm not gonna talk about it yet, but this is the final installment of the Lonesome Dove series. It's actually a quartet, there are four books. And yeah, we'll talk about Lonesome Dove though 
We'll talk about that when I get home, okay? Because I gotta get the book with me. I got all my notes in there and all the key points I wanna talk about. Um, it's just gonna be an introduction to that's currently what I'm reading right now because that book is so long, I can't possibly do one video on it, especially since I've already started it. So yeah, I'll talk about it over the course of the next couple of vlogs. Um, so yeah, that's the book haul that I've done today. You know, it's just a thing that, you know, when I'm out and about, I'm with my kid, and she got a couple of books as well, but when we're out and about, and we're in the area of one of the bookstores that we frequent, we, we always gotta stop. Because at the end of the day, with these used bookstores, the selection changes every day. So you have to stop in to see what else that they might have, you know, that's been on your radar, or at least, that's my logic um, behind why I go. So, so yeah, I'm excited for what's to come. That Korean barbecue was so delicioso. It was delicious. So yeah, I'm going to, I don't know, I need to go to the gym. I really should, um, I actually should go home, change clothes and go work out. That's actually what I should be doing right now, but mm, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's what I'm gonna do. Um, other than not having on a sports bra, I actually have on basically workout clothes. So I, probably, I really honestly could go to the gym now, but I will be so hot <laughs> if I go to the gym and work out. Um, in this, I'll be so hot if I do. I will see you guys when I get home so that we can talk more about Lonesome Dove, okay? So, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Deuces! All right, so I've just made it home from doing all of the stuff I've been doing today. Let's make me some coffee because. I'm feeling tired and I'm trying to stay awake because I've been just doing my own thing. You know, when you don't have somewhere to like report, you um, like you don't have to go to work in the morning and all that stuff. You're working on your own time, doing your own thing. I'm up all night long. So first of all, I'm up all night long and I'm not really sleeping in for real like I, I actually get my ass up at a decent hour also the next day so my sleeping pattern is completely thrown off so I'm trying to stay up um and do it do what I need to do to stay up it's five o'clock it's five five oh five oh that's good some good coffee and I want to talk to you guys about Lonesome Dove so my voice is gonna change a little bit. It's cause it's kind of far, but all right, y'all. So I am currently reading um, Larry McMurtry's um, McMurtry. Yeah, Larry McMurtry's Lonesome Dove. I am about this much in, and as you can tell, I have tons of pages, dog-eared. My note-taking mechanism is as such, so along with tabbing i have tabs i do like whatever my heart desires when it comes to uh taking notes so um so i have tabs a tabbing system sometimes i mostly always take um notes on the books that i'm reading but what's been really working for me as of late with my note taking is so that I don't like lose speed and time and like lose momentum because all of the books that I have been reading lately have been so good. And so what I noticed with taking notes in the past, I stop what I'm doing, I do my underlining, then I grab a tabby, I tab the book, and then it's like the momentum is gone. So I do things like this. Um depending on where we are in the story or how I'm feeling in the story. I don't underline a particular passage. I just dog ear the entire page and then I write a note about why I did that. And then I'll probably more than likely go back later to really talk about it. So 
what did I put here? So I tabbed this, I mean, I dog-eared this page and I said, the story about the sign is funny and sweet. So this, ooh, <laughs> almost dropped it on my coffee. That was gonna be a disaster. Um, so this page in particular, for example, where it says the story about the sign is funny and sweet. So this tells a story about Augustus, um, reworking the sign. So they have a sign for, um, what's the name of the, what's the name? Cause I, I have notes also. And so also at the end of every chapter, I write down, um, specific things that are probably key details about what I'm learning about the characters or about that particular chapter in the event that I need to like go backwards. So I have a couple of notes here based on chapter one and then I do the same thing at the end of chapter two and it, it's only if the chapter had a lot of information. I do the same thing at the end of chapter three and then I kind of stop doing it on chapter four. But anyway, so for example, that page in particular so you have the hat creek cattle company so first of all lonesome dove is about um it's about these two cowboys who were former rangers um in texas on the border or the cusp of mexico and so they were texas rangers and they were protecting the border of mexico and also protecting mexico from indians um specifically i think this is like 1860s 1850s 1860s 1870s around that time period um, it's definitely 1870s because it's after slavery for sure. So it's like 1875-ish because they also have a black man who works with them very closely. They're really close to him. His name is Deets. So what happened is they, the two cowboys are, um, Cal, Captain Cal and Augustus. And so what is Cal's real name. His real name is Cal's real name is Woodrow and Augustus Augustus's real name is Augustus. But you'll the narrative um jumps from calling him Augustus to Gus. So you have Cal and you have Gus and they're the Rangers, they're the captains and they're the owners of the Hat Creek Cattle Company. And so they drive cattle. Really they're thieves. They steal cattle from the Mexicans over in Mexico, bring them back to Texas and they sell them. And and that's how they're making their living. That's how they make their lives work. They're described as not really, um, they're not really poor at all. They're really pretty much well off, but they want adventure. So Gus doesn't quite want adventure, but in however, Cal wants adventure. He doesn't like to sit still for too long. He wants some sort of, he's seeking something that will fulfill him. And so we're learning a lot about these particular characters individually. So it's a lot to talk about right now i'm on chapter 37 that is 253 253 pages in i've been reading this book consistently for two days now this will be day three that i've been reading this book and i just have to tell y'all it's a masterpiece um now this book is definitely considered to be the great american novel among a lot well and it can be classified of course it's a western so it's fiction and it's a western so it's the great american novel the great american western and you have a cast of characters so i can't talk into detail about all of the cowboys that have come into the picture but what i will do is i will talk about part one because i'm now on part two so part one of course we meet cal and we meet gus and we meet um newt and we meet jake um we have this wonderful woman who is introduced her name is Lori or Lorena she's a whore uh, but she's like one of the most beautiful women any of these men have ever seen her being a whore doesn't take away from her beauty doesn't take away from her tenacity um, she's very smart and she's very quiet she has really strong character and she really knows her stuff she knows what she wants and she's not to be controlled by any man and I absolutely love her um, and then you have the rest of the crew so you have the cook you have ball which is bolivar he's bolivar he's um a mexican cook and deets is the black he's the he is a ranger no he is like the first to cal and gus so if you have any questions you need any help any concerns about anything if cal and gus are not available the next person that you will go to is deets and then you have um I'm missing somebody who is particularly one of the main characters. 
And his name is, hold on, because I want to talk about him too. P.I. Parker, he's also just like a helper, a worker with them. And then one more boy, and I can't think of him. And the reason why I want to mention him is because it's so cute how obsessed he is with Lori, with Lorena. He loves her freaking guts, but his name will come to me soon. But in talking about this novel, Chow, Larry McMurtry, he, first of all, he's amazing. So rest in peace to him. I think he died in 2021. Um, he, he, he did the damn thing with this. But the thing is, when I started looking him up, I was like, oh my gosh, of course I'm gonna like Larry McMurtry. One of my favorite movies of all time is um, Terms of Endearment. And he wrote that movie. He wrote the screenplay, he wrote the book. He wrote the book, he wrote the screenplay. I also really love um, um, Brokeback Mountain. And he wrote the screenplay for Brokeback Mountain. Even though Annie Prue wrote that short story, he wrote the screenplay. It was a very short story. So to take a short story and make it into this like two hour movie, that's like, what? That was a masterpiece, won tons of Oscars. So I did my research on him and I'm like, of course I'm gonna like Lonesome Dove. And so this tells the story from where I am, it tells the story of humans, once again, character, character building, character development. Um, it's definitely not, it's action, but I haven't gotten to like, more, like I haven't gotten to like the super action packed parts. There have been, um, through in part one, we've learned um, about each of the characters. We've learned about their wants. We've learned about their needs. We've learned about things that make them tick. We've learned about how, you know, how they've kind of sort of gotten to where they are. But I think as the narrative follows or moves along, we're gonna learn more and more about why each of them are like situated in the, um, the hat the hat creek cattle the hat creek cattle company <laughs> and it's just very interesting like for me in particular the way larry mcmurtry uh, pays like close attention or paid close attention to detail as it relates to um jotting down the characteristics of each character and like how he positioned them in the novel it's amazing for instance lorena and jake are gonna like get together right so she's a whore and she you know she calls the shots you know it's her body and so jake came in which augustus foreshadowed that jake was gonna come in and kind of sort of sweep lorena off of her feet but only for a little while jake didn't think that lorena would still have her own mind and her, her own bearings even though he came in he's one of the cleanest cowboys she's ever met fresh breath you know along this she just he just talks about everything and he doesn't make he doesn't gloss over the idea that being a cowboy is like a really hard treacherous thing and treacherous job and really your bandits your thieves all these things he gives you the real the raw the gritty and so when jay came in he was kind of sort of like a different type of cowboy um he didn't have like i said stinky breath he liked to bathe and be clean and he had a really fresh face and this is a one telltale sign that told Lorena, oh, I don't know if this is like a real man because his hands were not rough and tough. And at that particular time, unless you went to college and became a banker, you worked with your hands. You were on the plane, the Great Plains. You were working on the ship. You were doing something. And so she was like, mm, this is a smooth talker, but I'm going to see what he's about and I'm going to like him a lot, but I'm not going to give him my full self. But the that's not how it's written it's written more beautiful way more beautiful than that and so that makes me wonder about larry mcmurtry's experiences with people and with women because you know i'm a woman i'm always going to be reading from the viewpoint of a woman so i can't help but pull out i'm reading about all these men but i can't help but but pull out the details that are put into the character of Lorena and I've also finally met a second female character her name is Elmira and he does the same thing again like he the the mannerisms of these women it's just like what 
it's breathtaking because it's like as a woman I'm at the tender age of 32 and I'm just like I'm at this point where it's just like let me see Lori is me I am her here's for here's an example of what I'm trying to say about how Larry McMurtry writes Lori's character all right so there was something different about her her meaning Lori Jake had to admit she had a beautiful face a beautiful body but also a distance in her as he had never met in a woman certain mountains were that way like the bighorns the air around them was so clear you could ride toward them for days without seeming to get any closer and yet if you kept riding you would go to the mountains he was not so sure he would ever get to Lori. You know what I mean by get to. You know what he means by that. He was not so sure that he would ever get to Lori. Even when she took her, even when she took him, there was a distance between them. And yet she would not let him leave. You know what I mean? Like a lot of women, when you when you find a partner or when you find somebody who you really like and you guys are having great experience together, dating, intimacy is on point, but um, and you and you give yourself over to them. And so it almost seems as though they can do no wrong in your eyes. No matter what they do, you allow them back into your life and you never want them to go. Lori is not that type of woman. And it strikes Jake very much like sparks fly for him because he's like whoa you know this one's gonna make me work hard for her to like really start giving it up to me everything giving me her full self and so Lori she's never going to do that I can tell I haven't I don't know yet but I don't think she's ever going to she's never going to do that and so now let's go to um I want to go to a couple of um lines about Elmira and how he writes Elmira. So Elmira, all of all of uh, part one, we're getting to know everybody that I just talked about, everything about them. We get to know pretty much everything. And what happens is they're actually about to go on a journey. So Jake comes back to Lonesome Dove, which is like this little town within a town of its own. And that's where the Hat Creek Cattle Company is located. And that's where, you know, all the guys live. And so he talks of Montana and how Montana is going to be the place, the boom town. You need to go there, get your land, take your cattle and settle there because it's going to be the place that you want to be. And so when he does that, it automatically sets something off in cattle because Cal is looking for the great unknown the adventure he's tired of standing still right and also one thing to note that these guys are or Captain Cal and Gus are are older they're like 56 60 they're in their older but older then wasn't how wasn't old now because you had to do so much work in your life that you kept up with your body your stamina you know older then there was they were still able to move and work and you know shuck and jive or whatever and so what happens is we're leading up to them leaving lonesome dove and getting ready to go on their adventure to montana to migrate to montana and so after part one they have all left montana everybody that i named are on the road to montana not to mention these two irish guys these two irish brothers who are some of the the way larry mcmurtry wrote them there's it's funny this is this book is just it's chef's kiss it's chef's kiss so let's go into um let's talk about elmira for a second so part two we're introduced to elmira and um july johnson and so what ha what you'll learn about part one is that jake came back to lonesome dove because spoiler alert spoiler alert fast forward a few seconds okay fast forward like a minute or two minutes Jay came back to Lonesome Dove out the blue out of nowhere because he made an accident and he killed a dentist over in a town in Arkansas. And so everyone knows that it was an accident. He said it was an accident. When we get to part two, July Johnson, which is the dentist brother, said it was an accident also. But July Johnson's sister-in-law, Peach, is the one who is hell-bent, dead set on July leaving town and finding Jake, bringing him back so he can be hung. So july johnson is elmira's husband what july johnson doesn't know is that elmira used to be a whore and so she has this like instinct that you know she's not happy where she's at and she wants to leave she's kind of reminiscent a little bit of um 
what is her name of kate of kate in um the salinas valley the salinas valley um and that i can't it's on the tip of my tongue that book and how am i forget i always forget that damn book um what is it east of eden she's kind of reminiscent of kate in east of eden just a tad bit not all the way and you can tell like he had took mcmurtry took some just a little bit of inspiration from that but by the time he wrote lonesome dove he had already written so many novels that i won't even do that to him and say that he you know all books talk to each other there are a lot of books are in conversation with each other but elmira reminds me a lot of um kate from east of eden but anyway this is something that he wrote regarding Elmira that's so true for somebody like me. So I'm gonna read the quote. Here it says, she wanted July and Joe, Joe is her son. She wanted July and Joe to be gone suddenly so she would not have to deal with them every day. Their needs were modest enough, but she no longer wanted to face them. She had reached a point where doing anything for anyone was a strain. It was like heavy work. It was so hard. Like, can you imagine coming upon a, a sentence like that regarding a character and you feel it like you're like, oh my gosh, that's me. Except I do want to continue to take care of my daughter. I'm not going to say that, but it's just, that's just me right now when it comes to my dating life. Like, I'm so content with not being in relationship with anyone, not thinking about anyone on that level. I just want to be with myself. I just want to take care of my daughter. Like I just want to be at home. I just want to be in my own space and I don't want to have to entertain. I don't want to have to cook for any man, anything like that. Like it's just like, huh, I just don't want to do it. And so I really felt that when he wrote that part about Elmira. So anyway, sentences like that is like sprinkled across this entire book so far of what i read and so he gets to the neat to the nitty gritty of each character like that's what i mean when i say he has done such a great job of um mapping out these characters and making them into people i am very much engulfed in this novel it's it's the same as like reading um, a Game of Thrones, you know, a Game of Thrones. I just finished Titus Grown. It's like an epic fantasy, but of course, centered on more of a realistic real life circumstances of cowboys. The whole the whole trajectory of the novel is reminiscent of, of, of an epic, of an epic fantasy, a high fantasy. Uh, and it's just so well done. It's so well done. It's everything that everyone said. So my girl over at the the library of a Lambeth, she is the first person that i heard talk about lonesome dove i didn't even know that there was a mini series and so i watched her video i think i found i found her channel last year and so i watched her video and i shared that video sometime last year as well and so she was the first person so I had been on the lookout for this book um, secondhand and I love the edition that I have. It's so great, so sturdy, so durable. These old books like this, they were made different. This book was, this book is a 1985 edition. Yeah, they were built different. And honestly, I feel like whoever had this didn't read it because the spine wasn't broken. I've been breaking the spine as I've been reading. I've been having to break the spine. So, or they just didn't or just sometimes I guess people don't break spines when they read but I have to break the spine when I'm reading so anyways I've been on the lookout for it but I bought this the day before my birthday I found this the day before my birthday and uh, also what ended up happening was subsequently thereafter Claire over at Claire Reads posted a video I want to say a week or two ago and she also just read Lonesome Dove she was reading Lonesome Dove in that vlog and Although her her viewpoint is completely different from the library of a Lambeth, they both had two different ways of explaining or expressing what Lonesome Dove did for them. It's still they both were very excellent as we all are different and we have different perspectives. I'm not expecting people to like mimic or say the same things, um, especially in the in the booktube community. We all have different viewpoints. So I love Claire's viewpoint and I love because we don't know her name. I love the library of a Lambert's viewpoint. And I was like, oh, 
instantly, as soon as I'm finished reading The Idiot, this is what I'm going to be reading next. And so, of course, this is my first read of April. We are on the 3rd of April, right? It is April 3rd. So, I expect to have this finished by the weekend because it is so... It's so compulsively readable. Now, this one is a true compulsively readable book. Excellently written. Like, you want to keep going. It's not boring at all. There are no boring, dragging parts. And also, the, the chapters are short. They're like five to seven pages. And so, each chapter, you're either going to continue on where you left off at or you're going to be entering into a whole new situation, which I also love that as well. So, yeah, this book is amazing. Like, it's so, so good. Um, I'm loving it so much. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's making my day. I'm actually about to sit over here and read it now. Um, oh, this is good. I'm gonna answer um, some comments though on my video. And then I'm gonna go sit down and read some more of the book um, or whatever. So, yeah, that's my spiel on Lonesome Dove. This is not quite a Lonesome Dove video. You know, this is just a check-in. So this is just a weekly little midweek check-in. Like I said, we were eating, did a little mini book haul, and I introduced my most favorite book of the month. It's coming like the favorite book of the year. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm gonna go ahead and like put that out there. This book is coming like, it's gonna be my favorite. One of my favorite books of 2024, so. Oh hit myself in the face so yeah anyway i think i'm actually gonna wrap this video up here and honestly start on a new one um so yeah that's that with this one thank you guys so much for watching tuning in subscribing thank you for commenting all of it absolutely means the world to me i don't know about anybody else but i'm truly here to communicate and facilitate a community where we are all open and honest about our reading life and sharing our experiences that's all i'm interested in over here on booktube that's all i truly want everyone is welcome everyone is invited um and that's just it moving forward this is just a safe space to be exactly who you are and nothing more nothing less so thank you guys so much for joining me here and i'll see you guys in my next upload. Deuces.